Okay guys, wanted to go ahead and shoot this video before I disassemble the trailer too far. As you can tell, it's, it's fairly disassembled at this point, but I wanted to do, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to do a good before and after. So here you can see I've got the, uh, the XP hanging out on one of the dollies. I've got another dolly over here. I've got my four new bunks that I actually got from Confab. Big shout out to Lawrence over there. Dude, you're awesome to work with. Thank you so much for giving me the time and helping me out getting the parts I need. So four new bunks already carpeted, ready to roll. I've got the wheels and tires already on there, as you can see. I, I pretty much went with the same wheel and tire combo that I had on my last restoration on that single axle, except this time I went with silver instead of black. So it's gonna add, I think, a nice little pop once the trailer's red. So essentially my plan is to do all red, so cherry red. You can see the paint that I've got in the primer right there. Again, nice little Home Depot paint job. So the whole trailer is going to be red with black trim or black slash gray trim. So the nice thing is, as you can see over here, I've got the new winches and the jack wheel that will be that silver color or aluminum, you know, silver grayish, if you will. And that should match with the rims nicely. And uh, with a red trailer and black bunks with some gray trim, I think it's going to look really nice. Um, Lawrence hooked me up with some new stickers, as you can see super old school confab trailer stickers um, you know this is a 1996 trailer so the interesting thing is i picked this up from a guy because long story short i only have so much room to work with in my garage as far as width is concerned so if you'll notice from you know edge to edge there i believe last time i measured is exactly 94 inches so when I got the first dual trailer that I thought I struck gold on as far as a deal, I get all the way home and the thing won't fit. It's about six inches too wide. So long story short, sold it. And I knew that this particular trailer would fit um, because I had you know, measured it ahead of time. This go around, didn't make that same mistake twice. And uh, sure enough, it fit. And now it is close, but it does fit. So it'll hold two you know, full-size skis. They're super close. And I even have to caddy them just a little bit, just tilt them on the trailer bumps just while they're sitting idle in the garage, just to get it in. And if you can see in the back, I don't know if you guys that follow the channel, you'll probably remember this from the bass boat and the Jeep hoist top and all this other stuff I've done in this garage. But I've got that wireless ATV winch that I can just hook to this trailer and back it in. That way I can steer it up front. Now the other really cool thing that Lawrence did over at Confab, again, huge kudos to you, man is when I first bought this trailer, it was a 1,500 pound axle. And the hub was actually bent just a little bit. And the guy was honest with me that I picked it up from. You know, he told me he had two full-size skis that were probably a little bit over the weight limit of this trailer. So he was hauling too much weight and that caused one of the hubs to just bend just so slightly. So when I took it out to Confab, Lawrence and the team actually hooked me up with a 2,500 pound axle underneath this confab trailer and you can see right in the middle where they actually made the splice point and ran you know steel beam in between and then welded it back so the reason they had to do that is actually shorten it or make it a little bit more narrow so cut some of the width out because the way those 2500 pound axles are now they're designed for that same trailer that wouldn't fit in the garage so they had to actually trim some of the width off so that it would fit you know, the way the trailer was originally designed as far as width is concerned. So now I've got a really nice trailer. It's galvanized. It's about to be bright cherry red. It's going to have some nice wheels and tires, some black bunks, some all new hardware. And you can see right there the pieces where the actual winch and the, uh, the bow bump or bow stop is going to go. And all that's going to be red. So I hope it's going to look really nice when it's all said and done. And we'll, uh, we'll check back in and see how the progress is going. What is up, YouTube? So this is the conclusion to the trailer rebuild. So this is the final product of exactly how it came out. Just wanted to do a real quick recap video to bring this to a close. This was a fun project. It took literally an entire weekend, more or less. Um, certainly was very involved, very backbreaking. A lot of ups and downs going under this trailer. Uh, doing some primer, some paint under on the underside, doing some wiring, all that good stuff. But essentially to recap, what I did is I basically took this dual jet ski confab trailer. It started out, I've got some pics uh, that I'll pop in here in a minute, but it started out as a, you know, a nice galvanized trailer, but it did have a bent hub when I picked it up. 
and apparently whoever owned it before me probably was hauling a little bit too much weight on it um, two full-size jet skis as opposed to what it was originally rated for which was only 1500 pounds so the very first order of business was to take it to confab and actually get a new axle and that's exactly what i did but rather than just getting another 1500 pound axle i wanted to go ahead and you know somewhat future proof it if i wanted to haul two heavier skis so instead of a 1500, I went with a 2500 pound axle and most of the newer confab axles are actually too wide. And you know, that's really another saga for another day, but essentially the garage opening that I've got to work with here is only 93 inches, 94 if you technically want to start hitting some of this, uh, you know, little soft material to try to do a seal with your garage door. But essentially 93 inches is all I've got to work with, which is actually very narrow when it comes to a typical garage. I mean, most of the regular vehicles, like my wife's car, is really tough to fit in here. If you're not watching and paying attention to the mirrors, you'll actually bump the mirrors on the side. So it's a very narrow opening. So it was a challenge just to find a dual axle trailer that would even fit in the garage. So luckily I found this one. It was in great shape minus the hub. So now that we've got the double or the 2,500 pound axle in, you can see the splice point right in the middle. So essentially what they have to do when they put a, a heavier duty, narrower axle in is they cut a piece out and shorten it from a width standpoint and then put another piece of metal, you know, uh, on the outer side and weld it back shut. So it's actually stronger there than it would be had they not spliced it based on the way that they reconstruct the center point. So it's absolutely more than adequate, you know, to handle 2,500 pounds. So that was the biggest project is getting the new axle. So once that's done, it was all just cosmetic and, and hardware changes. And basically what I did, as you can tell from the intro video, is I stripped it all down, took off all the hardware, did some taping, you know, with painter's tape. For example, I wanted the suspension, the leaf springs to remain black. So you can see, maybe you can see there. So I kept those black and then, right here so I thought that would give it a you know a really nice contrast against the red so those remain black I picked up four new bunks directly from Cobb Fab so they were already pre-carpeted ready to go and the way that this trailer works with the bunks is actually the most painless process I've ever seen compared to other trailers that I've worked with you literally just have a self-tapping wood screw right here and these are two inch long wood screws there's one here and there's one right there on the other side you literally just drill right into the bunk and it holds it nice and secure against the bracket so super simple the center beam as well i had to completely redo it uh, it's just a long um, board that's a, almost a foot wide and i actually went a little bit wider with this board than what came on the trailer there was really no reason not to because you can see the bracket you know or not bracket but the actual mounting plate where the board can go there's actually a lot of extra room so I went ahead and went with an 11 inch wide board to give you a little bit more stability when you're walking on it. And essentially this board is for when you're, you know, walking down the trailer to take a jet ski on or off. It gives you a nice little platform to stand on. So you're literally not just, you know, waist deep in water at the boat ramp. <clears throat> now, you can also tell that I recarpeted this myself. I'm not an upholsterer, if that's an actual word, but it was a challenge doing the carpet and making it look nice. And, you see it in person you can tell where i've actually added a top layer like right here in the video you can see where there's some overlap but at the end of the day it looks good it's a nice carpet and it's bolted on well so as far as hardware is concerned i changed these out so the confab trailer typically comes with rollers and what i found on the front end of jet skis they're not really a sharp v so the roller actually didn't work all that well. So if you see what I'm talking about, like the front of the XP, if, you, if this will focus, see how it's really rounded? So there's not really a good spot for a roller. So I decided to change that out and just go with a typical V bump, which is what these are. So it's really wide and broad, so it'll give a nice resting spot for the front of the ski. And as far as the, the actual winches, I went with these Fulton F2 winches. Uh, all the links to the parts that I use will be in the description. These are really, really nice, guys. I mean, yeah, they were a little expensive, but if I'm restoring the trailer from scratch, you know, I wanted to go with some nice hardware. 
So the Fultons are nice. You know, they've almost got like a seat belt strap on them. And there's an adjustable handle too. Right here, you can actually adjust the length of the handle to get either more torque or based on clearance reasons. Got the nice spare attached to the front. And then also, I went with the dual wheel Fulton matching uh, jack. And believe it or not, this actually does make a difference that having that dual wheel. One of the challenges in the past with the single wheel, especially when you get weight on the trailer, you would literally have to kick it with your foot to get the wheel to turn. And even though these wheels aren't technically rubber, they're still big plastic wheels. They actually turn when there's weight on the trailer and even when there's not weight on the trailer, which makes it a lot easier to maneuver. And if you can see, it actually has a brake right there. So it'll actually lock it somewhat to keep it moving, especially if you're on a level ground, like in a garage, there's no point of bunking or chalking the tires with that locked, especially if your garage is level, it's not going anywhere. The other thing you can see that I did new safety chains. So I've got new safety chains that I installed there on the front. These are actually cables, the safety cables that are rated ad adequately based on this tongue weight. And I also did the seven way plug plenty of access you know to go into the truck and where everything connects I was actually quite pleased with if you can get a shot of this hopefully you can see this so this is the actual seven-way junction box and I was very very impressed by this and essentially it's just bolted to the underside of the trailer can't tell if I'm getting it in the shot or not but it's just bolted to the underside of the trailer all the wiring is nice and you know zip tied under the trailer so it's nice and clean and basically that lets you run the wires however you need to. And, you know, you can do reverse lights, you can do trailer brakes if necessary. <coughs> Excuse me. This trailer actually doesn't have brakes on it, but it gives you that option. So with regards to lights, let's take a look at some of this. So I actually installed, let's go on this side. I actually installed these trailer LED light boxes. This was not factory on this particular trailer. So I bolted these on installed some smoke i don't know if that'll focus but these are smoked led lights which look really clean they come with a side marker on the side and i even installed reverse lights so those are literally just white led reverse lights and they do come on when the trailer's in reverse i've got a nice uh, three led strip that's also smoked right there in the center and then of course the license plate bracket so the only other thing to mention on the trailer that I actually had Comfab do is I actually had them weld in two little loops and you can see those and I've got a cable attached to it. Now technically I could have used these which are on the trailer from the factory but those are really designed to be transom tie downs for your jet skis to keep them from bouncing on the trailer and I wanted a little bit lower pull point because what I use those for if you follow this cable and the garage is filthy, by the way. You gotta love overspray. So that'll be the next project to re-epoxy the garage. But I have a wireless winch that's actually bolted to the garage floor. So this is literally just a 3,000 pound ATV winch bolted right into the concrete. And it's running off of a typical deep cycle, you know, marine car battery or marine battery, not car battery. And it's connected to, you know, one of those battery tenders that keeps power to it. So the purpose of this, it's got a wireless remote, is it's not needed obviously when there's no weight on the trailer because I mean this thing's super light, you can just move it. But the idea, and this works really, really well. I've used this on a bass boat before. I've used this on this particular trailer. But when we take the brake off of this wheel and we turn this on, I can literally sit at the front of the trailer and have this winch the trailer in. Now it may seem simple, but when I get up here and I'll show you the clearance, you'll see exactly why this is needed. So if we stop right here, and this is where the actual tires hit the garage, notice this clearance. So we're talking an inch roughly. And if we come over here, I mean, look at this guys. I mean, we're, we're barely making it. Now imagine if there's let's just say 2,000 pounds worth of jet skis sitting on this trailer and you're trying to navigate this what this winch really lets me do is steer the front of the trailer either with my legs my hands whatever I want to do as I winch this in the garage 
So it's a perfect solution for getting a narrow fit and making it really easy. And this pulls the weight no problem. It'll simply pull the trailer right on in the garage. So it's a piece of cake. It really does help simplify things when I'm going in and out of the garage. And the other thing it does is coming out of the garage. It allows me to let it slowly creep out of the garage, let it go down the natural slope of the driveway and then keep resistance and keep pressure on it while I'm connecting it to the truck. So it's a really, really cheap way of helping you get either a jet ski or a bass boat in and out of the garage with ease while you're driving the trailer essentially from the tongue where you can get much more sharp cut angles. So guys, that's a review of the trailer project. It's complete. I'm definitely happy with the way it turned out. The, the cherry red, which is the color I went with, matches the Ram Rebel quite nicely. So all I need now is to put some skis on it and hit the lake. Thanks again for watching the video. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more DIY videos. And make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notified when I post a new video. Thanks for your time, guys. Enjoy your day.